From Penman Stadium, this is Game Face. I'm Bob Lippman from Athletic Communications. And it's our hope with this little program to introduce you to some of the coaches and players, members of the SNHU athletic community. And I'll remind you that at any time, you can visit us 24-7 at snhupenman.com to check out the latest schedule. Click under Fans, Composite Schedule. You'll get the latest. I know our men's soccer team is looking forward to hosting Senior Night in the next couple of weeks, and many of our fall teams will begin the push for an NE10 championship in the near future. SNHUPenman.com, we'd love to see you at a game. Today on Game Face, we're with one of the newest members of the Southern New Hampshire University Hall of Fame. It's a pleasure to welcome Coach Ariel Texera, a one-time player as part of the program, and Ariel now with the, uh, the, with the club up. I promise we'll come back and talk about your playing <laughs> career here, which I, I'm sure there are still a lot of great memories. But you've been a part of the program now as a head coach, five straight trips to the NCAA tournament, and here you are in the middle of competition this year. Can you kind of give our, our viewers a little update on where we are with the team this year? Yeah, um, like you said, I joined the staff um, as an assistant from 2012 to now. Um, and each team has sort of been different as the years go on. So that's been a fun experience in that sense. Um, the The group now is, is an awesome group of girls, um, a lot of girls from all over the world, which has made the, the environment nice and fun and lighthearted. Um, you know, we've been dealing with some injuries a little bit throughout the beginning of the season but starting to get some girls back, which is the perfect time to do it as we are uh, midway through the NE10 conference schedule. How do you see Southern New Hampshire in the conference, the NE10? Uh, I truly believe it. I tell the girls all the time that if they are at their best, they're one of the best to be in the conference. Um, they're tough to compete with. Um, they are constantly fighting and grinding through each minute of the game. They're never giving up. Very relentless uh, mindset that they have um, playing the full 90 minutes. So, again, I may be a little bit biased, but for me and the girls on the team, that I can tell that they're just a special group. It just sometimes is, uh, doesn't click all the time. So, again, we're still getting there midway through the season. And you had an opportunity to go to Florida with the team this year, which is a little bit unusual. Yeah, very strange. Um, with a few teams leaving the conference a bit late, uh, going D1, we had a chance to sort of venture out a little bit, spread our wings, and play some competition that's well without the region. Um, you know, so we ventured to Miami, headed to uh, Barry and Lynn, and again, just a, a cool little experience for the girls. They um, had to adapt to some of the weather, but again, they battled through that and a pretty good uh, two game result that we had going down there. Uh, again, just randomly in the middle of uh, September. Now, having been a coach and, and for more than a decade, and I'll ask you to bring your prop out here because I asked Ariel to, uh, to share with us uh, something meaningful about the SNHU women's soccer program. You've won a championship mm -hmm. and you've been to the NCAA tournament. This is a program that is very well respected, uh, not only uh, around the Northeast, but uh, I think that nationally, People know about uh, the program here, and how has how has that happened? Show everybody your ring, too. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we won um, the this was the 2017 championship for the NE10, and uh, also as a coach, I won it in 2012, my first year coaching. So it's kind of special. Uh, it was a five-year hiatus to then win this one again. Um, yeah, it's so interesting because you think of SNU and you just think it's so small. You know, you're out there recruiting all the mm -hmm. time, and people are like, "Oh, online school." You're the one with the bus. You guys have a campus? And we're like, yeah. Ironically enough, we have, actually have a pretty decent, you know, athletic department and a, a pretty good women's soccer program at that. Um, so it's been kind of fun to sort of put SNU women's soccer on the map in that sense, you know, not only regionally, like you said, but nationally. We're within the mix of the polls and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, it's just... Uh, it's just so crazy to think that SNU is on the national side of things because we've worked pretty hard to, to put our name there. Hall of Famer Ariel Texera is with us, and, and let's talk about how you built the Hall of Fame resume because you decided <laughs> to come here as a player to play women's soccer. Right. What went into that decision and uh, obviously worked out pretty well yeah. for you? Um, 
I was very late in the the whole recruiting process, which is interesting, um, especially on the women's side of soccer. They make decisions very early, sophomore, junior year. And I was at the end of my senior year still deciding on what where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. And so I came on one college visit and it was at Southern New Hampshire University. And there was something about the, you know, the tight knit community, the family oriented atmosphere, um, this small campus, but not so much where you weren't meeting new people and things like that. It was just very welcoming. Um, and then the soccer side of things, the staff and the girls on the team, again, were just full of, you know, open arms and smiles and things like that. So it just made it to be a little bit more comfortable for me. Um, and me being from a small town in Rhode Island, a small state, that sense of community and family was what drew me here. This was before Coach Ellie Montero took over the program. Correct, yep. So I was here with Terry Prouty um, and Deb Robitaille, who's now the head softball coach here at SNU. Um, I played for them for four years, coached with them for two, and then Ellie Montero came on and I um, joined his staff. But I did play against Ellie Montero while he was his coach at UMass Lowell, so we were familiar with each other. Did you did you have a, a sense coming here that you know maybe one day you were going to be a coach? When, when you were a player? Yeah, uh, it honestly didn't click to me at all. I was a sport management major. Um, I knew that I wanted to stay involved in sports in some way. And then while I was here, I had to pick up an internship with my uh, you know, academic program and whatnot. And I ended up joining on uh, with the New England Revolution. And then through that, I picked up some youth teams around here and that sort of caught me the bug a little bit, you would say. Um, then Terry had asked me to join the staff. And even then, I was still a little bit weary about the college level coaching and things like that. I still obviously wanted to play uh, a little bit. Um, but again, the bug just hit and you just took off from there. Always really competitive? Always competitive. Yeah, even if it's practice, I wanted to win. Even now, you know, it's, it's a little bit different as a coach, but it almost feels like you're more competitive because you can't go out there and run for the girls or score for the girls or anything. And it's just your words. So it kind of hurts a little bit more. <laughs> Did you play anything other than soccer when growing up? Yeah, I played basketball, um, AAU basketball all growing up. And that sort of was my conflicting thing as far as the recruiting process. I didn't know if I wanted to do basketball or soccer in college. Um, and then I played one year of lacrosse. So yeah, I was a, a multi-sport athlete in that sense. How much have have things changed from your player a few years back? Yeah, you know, yeah we, we a little bit. Throw the number <laughs> out now, and uh, and now you're out on the on the recruiting trail, trying to to compete at the Division Two level. What's maybe what's the same? What's what's a little bit different? Yeah, I mean the level of athlete kind of is a bit the same. You know, um, this conference has always been fast, fit, and physical. You know, when I was being recruited, those were the three words that were used. When, uh, when we're looking out there now, that's exactly what we're looking for, the fast, fit, and physical. Just because, you know, again, you're competing with some of the best players and teams in the nation. We've got a few teams within our conference that are nationally ranked. Uh, again, so in order to compete with that, you've got to bring, be able to bring that in, too. Um, so that part is sort of the same. Um, I mean, in general, players are sort of – or female athletes are sort of evolving, so you got to kind of roll with the times a little bit, um, adjusting some, you know, coaching things and whatnot as far as, you know, off-field stuff and being on the field and that side of it. Um, you got to be a little bit more conscious of how we're handling some of these student athletes because, again, at the end of the day, they are people, and we've got to, again, be, be a little bit mindful of that. And the international component, that was there even when you played? Uh, very, very little. Um, you see it definitely a lot more now. Uh, obviously, we've got girls from uh, Sweden, Netherlands, mm -hmm. Australia, Canada. Um, when I played, I think we maybe had one, uh, if that. Uh, on the men's side, it was always heavier. But on the women's side, it's nice to see that you know we're bringing a little bit more color and, uh, and culture into, into, the, uh, into the program. What does uh, the Hall of Fame mean? Have you had a, an opportunity to kind of think about that and and the fact that I mean, you were inducted with a, a pretty terrific group? Yeah, there. again, thinking, very colorful you know, group, right? Yes. The, Coach the Stan and the, and, the, and the national championship team and 
it's, it's, it's a great recognition for what uh, you were, were able to accomplish here. Yeah, I'm honestly more impressed with the, the group that was selected because um, it's sort of fun because, you know, when I was playing, I was with some of those players, um, obviously with Coach Than uh, being around. I was there when in his environment that mm -hmm. he created. Um, and then even as I started coaching, I was still able to see some of those players that were selected to be in the Hall of Fame. So that part of it is pretty cool, um, you know, and coming back and seeing some of those people again and, again, just remembering some of those crazy moments that they had in their careers. Um, so that part, again, that, that was pretty awesome to be a part of um, and obviously just special to still be here within the women's soccer program and being honored with that, with some of the, uh, the current players there. Uh, it was pretty honorable. Fantastic, uh, for sure. Congratulations to you. Oh, before you go, favorite Halloween candy? Whew. And um, I, I, here you go. If you, yeah. need, if you need some help here on uh, on which ones. Yes. Um, All I, my Kit Kats are on the top, so leave those. Yeah, so Twix now offers left and right, so I always yes. pick the left Twix, but I got to go with Reese's. There you go. Yeah. Ariel, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with yes. us on Thank Game you Face. Me. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ariel Texera, the uh, Hall of Fame class of 2023. Welcome back to Game Face. I have an opportunity here to meet John Burling, uh, one of our men's tennis players. Uh, a couple years back, the Vern Cox Northeast 10 Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and and still going strong here now as a, a junior. What are you What are you studying? Uh, I'm studying business administration. Uh, and I'm actually trying to take my degree in three years and do a master's for my last year. So. All right. Mm. You're from Moss, Norway? Mm. That's correct. Which yeah. is where? It's uh, north of Europe. Uh, so uh, close to Sweden, Denmark. Uh, but it's a small country, like six million people. It's from there. So I'm happy I could come here and uh, play college. Uh, and I'm going to ask you about that. What about uh, tennis in Norway? Uh, is it a big sport? Um, it's like compared to the rest of the world, I wouldn't say that. It's pretty, pretty small. Like competing athletes are like the average uh, number is really small compared to here. So uh, being able to grow up, having a good coach, uh, back home, uh, being able to play as much as I did and having that opportunity of playing like indoors, outdoors, clay court, hard court was amazing. So, uh, but the number like, it's really, really small compared to, because we're only 6 million people. So it's hard to, like other sports like soccer, uh, hockey, uh, handball are other big sports. One of the top men's players though in, in the world is from <laughs> Norway. He is Kasper Rud, but... I feel like he's now after that, I think I feel a lot of more people are going to be start playing and wanting to compete mm -hmm. and seeing that uh, there's actually an opportunity that you can also turn professional and coming from a small country like that. It was tennis in your family. And I, I'll bring up that your yeah. biography, you told me that your dad was a, a top table tennis he was, player. Yeah. He and his brother, when they were younger, both of them were competing and they're actually competing against each other. But Tennis was just something that my mom and dad was just like, okay, let's try it. Let's see if he likes it. So I also played soccer when I was growing up. <laughs> so I was kind of mixing between either soccer or tennis. And, but I chose tennis and here I am. Take us from Moss, Norway to Hooks at New Hampshire and how that came about. So uh, Greg Kovac, uh, my tennis coach, he uh, came to Norway in um, February... 2020 around like when the COVID started uh, right before that and um, he came to watch me play and I remember that they had a really good practice and he was watching me and it was like okay I can give you an opportunity to come and play in the US and I also talked to a couple other schools but it was just not like like I didn't have peace with those, those other schools and I thought with coach like he was a really nice person and like you could trust him so I was like okay let's try it here. And I really like it here. So, Do we have many Norwegians on campus? There are one player at the men's soccer team. His name is Gore. So, but other than that, I don't think so. 
Okay. But you'll help spread the word for us. I will. About uh, Southern <laughs> New Hampshire University. Or with John Burling, Jonathan Burling, uh, you uh, came right into the Southern New Hampshire program and made a lot of noise. I, you, the Vernon Cox Award as a freshman, uh, as the top player in, in the league, is, is that's pretty special. Yeah, it was amazing, an amazing feeling. Uh, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to first be here and being able to compete. And uh, yeah, I just, I actually don't know how it happened. I just played good tennis, mm -hmm. I had some good results. Uh, it was tough, tough matches. Um, and I had a good team, good coach, uh, also from back home, uh, taught me a lot of things uh, for me to be where I am today. How do you push yourself to be better now? And how are you better now as a junior than you were as a freshman? So I would say I am better, um, like technically and physically. Right now I'm trying to um, push myself on the physical side to get stronger so I can compete longer. Uh, stay like out of injuries um, but like the motivation like it's hard to keep it up when you don't feel like it's going your way when you have a couple of tough losses you just got to keep going and know that every day is like you can play uh have a bad day one day but it's always like you're always going to learn from it and you got to look forward you got to look a couple years ahead and see where you want to be we're doing something a little different, aren't we, in the Northeast 10 this year where the men's team is playing a split conference schedule. So here you are about to wrap up your fall yeah. season, and then you're going to come back and play more games, more matches in the in the spring leading up yeah. to the NCAAs. How, how has that changed things a little bit? I like it. It can be a lot, especially when you are a student athlete and probably work as well uh so i think it's a little bit tough but i love it because you have the chance to if you feel like you didn't do well against a certain team or you feeling just like okay i want more matches then we're going to have more matches in the spring and it's nice to have that like couple of months break and then we start again so i don't mind i actually like it it's good i felt like the season was pretty short the uh, two first years so all right two more quick easy questions uh you, you told me that you're a busy guy, and I found out that you're an RA. Yeah. How does that add to your whole campus experience here? I think it's a good thing. Um, you get to know a lot of people, a lot of connections. Um, and let's say it's not going that well in the tennis court. You have other things that you feel like you're succeeding in, or you're having fun, or enjoying. Uh, and at the end of the day, college is, is an experience, it is fun. But you always got to think about what you want to do with your life after college. And I think that's that's the cool part where you're actually pushing yourself and getting to know other people. So, All right. Yeah. Halloween time. I'm going to ask you your favorite candy. Yeah. And I, I brought them all with me. So you got plenty to choose from. But how about in Norway? Do you, do you have Halloween? Do you do kids go trick-or-treat? Yes, absolutely. When I was younger, we did a lot of trick-or-treat, and I remember my parents didn't really like it because I came back with, like, this big bag of candy. Mm -hmm. Like all parents everywhere. Yeah, and they were just like, yeah, this is not good, but it's always fun. I, I loved them when I was younger, and yeah, it's cool. All right, so which candy are we picking? I would pick Twix. I love it. Twix? Yeah, it's caramel, good, chocolate. Good, sh good. good shout-outs yeah. uh, for sure. Mm. All right, John, uh, again, continued success. Uh, so proud of what you've been able to do here Thank in Southern you. New Hampshire. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that's our game face. Hope you've enjoyed it. Stay with us. We'll have uh, more coaches, more athletes. And again, follow along the schedules at snhupenman.com. Our producer today has been Justin Kaminsky. I'm Bob Littman. Take care. See you soon.